story I'm going to talk about today, Unscrupulous Investor. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of probate stories. I'm Brad with probateresource.com. We built probateresource.com to be an online one-stop shop for anyone going through the probate process to get answers to the questions that they might have. We've got referrals to great uh, probate attorneys, therapists, uh, real estate agents. Oh, by the way, we're a real estate solutions company at our core. We buy properties for cash all over the U.S. We buy single family properties, commercial properties, anything you've got. If you've inherited a property, we'd love to make you an offer on that. And like I said, we've got a fantastic network of real estate agents all over the U.S. that we work with that are probate and inheritance specialists that can help you get your property sold. So today I'm going to talk about probate stories. And the story I'm going to talk about today is the um, unscrupulous investor. I've been doing this a long time and I... I have met many investors come and go in this industry, right? Some of them don't last very long because they're unscrupulous. Some of them maybe stick around a little bit longer. Some of them do things that I would consider somewhat borderline unethical, but they've been in business for a decent amount of time. And they do enough volume where those things just sort of fall in the cracks, right? So we uh, just closed the deal. Uh, about a week ago, got a call from a seller, said, hey, I've inherited a um, house from my mom. My mom was like a, kind of a quasi landlord. She was almost running like a boarding house. So she had put like locks and she was renting out rooms in this house. And then her mom was living in the house um, upstairs and then renting out rooms down below. Apparently, I, I learned this recently, my like great, great aunt or something, um, my my grandfather uh, passed away a few months ago, um, and he lived a great, fulfilled life. He was in his 90s and lived an accomplished life. And anyways, his sister, or not sister, his aunt, uh, so I guess, gosh, that's like great, great, great aunt or something. His aunt did the same thing in uh, Portsmouth, Virginia. And she basically rented out, she has this house, that this big house, and uh, she had uh, basically converted it. Uh, the story was she inherited the house from her relatives. And she basically then lived in this house. And her source of income was that she rented out all these rooms to the house. And they were in Portsmouth, Virginia, near the Naval Yards and all that stuff. So she would rent them out to... Uh, sailors and to people that worked in the naval yards and that sort of thing. And she would rent out these rooms. So anyways, this lady from this house we bought, it kind of reminded me of that story. My mom had told me about this story. She had my aunt, I'm not going to say her name, but my aunt so-and-so. And my mom had memories of going to this house and hanging out. And it was this old Victorian house and, you know, huge house and had all these rooms and she rented out all these rooms and blah, 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 blah. And she did that like during the depression and, and all this stuff. So I thought that was kind of a cool story. But anyways, this lady was doing the same thing, right? She uh, had this house. She was renting out like two rooms in the basement. And then there was another bedroom on the main level, actually two other bedrooms on the main level. She was renting those out. And then she was living in the master suite. And then, so she had this kind of like boarding house going and uh, the area where she lived, it's it's kind of changing now, but for probably the last decade or two, it has been a very heavy sort of rental area. This particular house was built in the 1950s or six, I think it was late 50s when the house was built. Um, and uh, anyways, for a long time, it was like a super nice neighborhood and then seeing things kind of changed. And then anyway, so that's why she was renting this house out. She'd owned this house forever. So um, anyways, uh, after her, I think after her kids grew up, uh, they had kind of moved on that she started to rent these rooms out uh, was the story. And anyways, we're dealing with this lady. This was her mom's house. And she had a brother. And this lady lived kind of on the other side of town. And it was kind of about an hour drive one way with traffic for her to get there. And after her mom died, she was had these dreams of, you know, I'm going to fix this house up and I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And her and her husband would go over there and do stuff. And the reality was they quickly realized that this house was just like too much work. And they had obligations at home with their own jobs. They were older um, and they just didn't have the time or the energy to do the things like they used to. 
it was a haul to get there. They, they were just having to deal with a lot of a lot of complications to try to fix this house up, and it was going to take a lot of work. So she, they, she called us and said, hey, I got this house. I inherited it from my mom. My brother's on board with selling the house, and there's, there's two tenants in the property. So I, I don't know how to deal with this. I don't know like how to deal with the tenants. One of the tenants doesn't like me. The other guy loves me that lives there. So like, I, I, I don't know. Can you help me here? So we said, sure happy to help you you know this isn't our first rodeo so we helped her with the tenants we helped her uh, basically give notices to vacate on the tenants they were on month-to-month -month tenancies um and they neither of the tenants had paid rent in three months or four months basically since mom died they just stopped paying rent and they refused to pay rent to uh to this lady and i said well first of all you can evict them for non-payment and and second of all well this will be easy to to get them out of here so we basically said hey you here's your 60 days notice um, you have 60 days to move out and oh, by the way, we're not asking you for any money. So consider that a gift that we're not going to go back and try to come after you for back rent. So consider this a wash time to go. Right? So we helped her do that. Um, we've got templates and letters that our attorneys have written for us over the years, helped her kind of get the tenants dealt with, give them their notices to vacate. So we got her all that. And then um, we came across um, some other obstacles along the way. And one of the obstacles was that when my title company was doing a title search, they came across a cloud on the title. And these things are called different things in different states. But um, this was a, can be a memorandum of a contract, a notice of settlement. Um, there's different names. So basically, in essence, in a gist, if you go into contract with someone on a property, to, to buy it. Typically, typically investors, this has like kind of been this thing in the last few years where if you go in the Facebook groups or whatever, these gurus are teaching people to record these memorandums of contract on deals. And, and, and I've done them on deals before where a seller has kind of, a seller has been less than scrupulous and basically tried to go behind my back and I had invested time and money and effort into this deal and I recorded with the county that said, hey, I have a contract to buy this house. And I have on two different occasions done that. Look, two different occasions, hundreds of deals, right? These are two instances where the seller was literally not acting ethically at all. And, and because if a normal seller comes to me and says, hey, I want out of my contract, I say, sure, no problem, right? You know, because if they if they don't want to do business with me, that's fine, move on with life. But these other situations were very unique. In fact, I almost sued one of the sellers uh, and the seller's real estate agent that came into the picture after the fact the agent was not acting ethically and breaking their code of ethics. And I threatened to report them to the real estate commission and immediately, as soon as I did that, that agent's broker called me and was like, hey, no, 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 like, don't do that, blah, blah. And by the way, that was a probate deal too. This guy had inherited this house from his dad. And anyways, he, he had reached out to us for an offer. We made him an offer. He said, I want X for the property. We actually were like, hey, okay, we can pay X for the property. So we went on a contract at that price. And then he's like, trying to change his mind because this real estate agent's in his ear is like, hey, I have a buyer for this property. Da, da, da. He'll buy it from you and he'll pay you more money than this guy will. First of all, she's interfering with a contract I already have to buy. Turns out that other buyer was actually a friend of mine. So it went full circle. I, I That's enough about that deal. But basically that other buyer that would pay more was actually a friend of mine. And then he found out I was the other guy involved. And then things got a little hairy because he knew me and knew I uh, operate with integrity and was like, okay, this agent was acting a little shady, blah, 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 blah. So we'll, we won't go into that on this video. So the deal that we did, so she had, um, investors will record these uh, memorandums of contract. Basically, it's a recorded document with the court that says, hey, I have a contract on this house to buy this house, right? Um, it's a little different than an option contract, which I do option contracts on. I've done them on deals. I do them sometimes. Um, and it's a little different. It's a little bit of a gray area. So in this particular deal, this lady had, uh, consulted with a, an investor well over, it was like a year before we had, had spoken to her, right? It was right after her mom passed away. Anyways, that deal went sideways with that investor. 
And basically the investor was a wholesaler and she got pretty pissed off right off the bat because A, he didn't do what he would say he was going to do. And then B, all of a sudden he says, oh yeah, I want to bring somebody into the house to take a look at it. All of a sudden her house is full of investors and he's running a quasi auction on the front lawn of her property. By the way, I know this investor and on another deal, uh, the cops got called. Uh, I wasn't there, uh, but a friend of mine went to their the house and the cops got called because there was like literally a line of investor cars all the way down the street of all these people that were coming to like bid on this house on the front lawn of this house. And basically this guy was trying to sell his contract and say, hey, I've got a contract for X. And he just invites everybody and their brother over and they all come in and they bid it up. And the first person to send the money to the title company is the one who gets the deal. And I, I don't agree with that way of business. Does it work? Sure. Does he probably make more money that way? Sure. Is it an ethical way to operate your business? Is it a good way to stay in business in the long run? I don't think so. You're going to piss a lot of people off. I don't think that's the right way to do business, but to each his own, right? So anyways, she deals with this particular person and they do this on this. That pisses her off because now all of a sudden she's got all these people through the house. The tenants were like, what the heck? Who are all these people? Why am I like, because there were tenants in the house. Why am I having to deal with all these people in the house and blah, 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 blah. So there was a tenant privacy issue, which we always respect tenant privacy with, with sellers. If there's tenants, we respect the privacy um, you know, they have the right to quiet enjoyment is the legal term for it. Um, so anyways, we are, um, she goes in a contract with this person and then he then tries to change up the price and change up the contract and do pull all these fast ones and all these things. And finally she says, I'm done with this. I'm not doing business with you anymore. I'm turn. I want to terminate my deal. And then he says, Nope, sorry, you can't terminate. We have a contract and I recorded this with the county and you can't do that. Even though he didn't really hold up his end of the bargain. Fast forward to a year later, we had to get some attorneys involved. My attorney looked at it and was like, hey, I need copies of the contract. So he sent copies of the contract. We had copies of all the communications. I mean, their text message conversations were tit for tat. Like it was bad. And this guy was not acting ethically at all. And should have just let her out of just let her out of the contract, bro. Like, just just go, man. It's not worth the fight. But I guess he wanted to win the fight and thought he was gonna hustle her for some money or something. Whatever. To each his own, right? So, anyway, she got stuck in the middle of this, but we couldn't close because my title underwriter wouldn't close the deal until my title underwriter could see that basically that contract like was null and void or whatever. So we actually got in touch with the original title company. The original title company is like, yeah, we don't do business with that person anymore because of this very situation. They've done this to other people. So we had that proof from the title company. We also got uh, realized that uh, A, the contract was worded where it could be voidable. Um, voidable means if it went to a judge in court and the judge looked at it, he could the judge could void it or the judge could say, okay, no, it's going to go through, right? They have to look at the intent of the contract and some other things, right? That's a whole legal conversation for another day. But anyways, and also this person didn't tender any of the earnest money deposit and blah, 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 some other factors. I'm not going to get into all the crazy details, but basically we had to get another attorney involved in this equation and have this other attorney jump through some hoops and do some stuff to basically disprove this contract and da 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 da. Ultimately, uh, that was enough for the title underwriter on our end to say, okay, we feel comfortable enough with this deal that, and plus it's been a year and these these memorandum of contracts are only good for a certain amount of time and that statute of limitations is expired and blah, 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 blah. So we're willing to ensure title. So we got through all those hurdles and we we dealt with the tenants and we got all that and we got it to the finish line and I'm happy to say we closed on it. We bought the house. She was ecstatic about selling this house. There were some tears involved on the last day. She was kind of sad to see this house go, uh, but she was also happy to kind of be done with all of the headaches and the heartaches and the drama that came along with getting this deal closed. And all this was because basically some investor was putting money before people. And that's one of our core values at probateresource.com is we never put a dollar before people. 
People are like, we're all people here. We need to treat each other like human beings. We need to do what we say we're going to do, right? We need to treat other people the way we would want to be treated. And we never put a dollar in the way of doing the right thing. I'm in this business to make money, right? I, I am in it to make money. That's how I put food on my kids plates and that's how I put a roof over my head is buying and selling real estate and renting real estate and all of the above. But at the end of the day, we're all people. We all have our stories and we have to respect those stories and we have to do what we say we're going to do and operate with integrity. This particular investor in this case did not operate with integrity and created a lot of heartache and drama and cost this seller some money and getting attorneys involved and hiring attorneys to do X, Y, and Z and fix these things. So if you are dealing with an unscrupulous investor, we can connect you with some legal resources if you need to do that. I have some uh, some attorneys who uh, I can recommend that might uh, help you uh, litigate some of these things if it does involve litigation. You may require some additional intervention from an attorney, maybe sometimes just a demand letter works. Um, but sometimes there are uns unscrupulous investors out there who do things and put properties under contract and don't follow through with what they say they're going to do and they create issues for the sellers all for the sake of making a buck. And it's unfortunate that that happens, um, but it is a way of life and those people exist in this world. If you have a property that you're interested in selling, you've inherited a property, uh, like I mentioned earlier in the video at probateresource.com, we buy properties. We buy properties all over the U.S. Uh, we can make you a cash offer for that property. We'd love to buy it from you. Um, or if you want to go the traditional route, list that property with a real estate agent. We've got a fantastic network of real estate agents all over the U.S. that are probate and inherited specialists. So if you're interested in working with us, go to probateresource.com or click on the link below in the description. It'll take you to probateresource.com. You can fill out the form there on our website. And uh, as soon as you submit that form, a member of our team will be in touch with you ASAP. Thanks for checking out this video today and stay tuned for some of our other probate stories episodes where I talk about some crazy deals we've done and the crazy stories that have happened over the years. So thanks again. Have a good day. Bye-bye.